So the discriminant is referring to a specific part of the quadratic equation. But it's a part that's going to help us um, figure out something about our quadratic. So when you look at this quadratic equation, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. We can kind of see like three different parts almost. There's three terms. We have our negative b. We have all this square root stuff. And then we have our 2a. And yesterday we talked about what if a was 0? Then the quadratic formula doesn't work. But if a is 0, then you don't actually have a quadratic, because that means there's no x squared term. There's something else that can kind of go wrong with the quadratic formula, too, though. And that's, what if we had a negative number under this square root? Okay. So the discriminant, I, I can't remember what the discriminant actually is. I think it's just b squared minus 4ac. It might be the square root of b squared minus 4ac. But I'm going to show you how to use it, and then you can think of it as whichever one of those makes sense. So it's this thing that's under the square root sign. And like we said, if this is negative, right? if I did a quadratic and this came out negative, I'd have the square root of a negative number, which should mean there would be no solution. Or at least no real solutions. Because in Algebra 2, you will learn about the square root of negative numbers. But for now, we're just going to say, if this is negative, oops, I forgot to say. So here's our discriminant. right? If this is a negative number, then we have no solutions. If this is a positive number, then we're going to have two different solutions. Are there any other possibilities? Could it be anything other than negative or positive? Yeah, what if it's zero? What would happen if it was zero? You would have one solution, because you'd have negative b plus or minus zero. Well, plus zero and minus zero are the same thing. And so you're going to end up with just one solution. Let's draw a graph. Let's draw a parabola that has no solutions. Right? A parabola that has no solutions is probably going to look something like this. Or maybe it's down here and it looks like this. All it means is our parabola never actually crosses the x-axis, right? The, the range of our possible y values does not include 0. It doesn't include anything on the x-axis. So this is a negative discriminant, a graph with no solution. A positive discriminant, a graph with two solutions, is any graph that's going to cross the x-axis. So that one, and you know, something over here like that. Anything that crosses it in two places. What about a graph with a discriminant of 0, or one solution? What is that going to look like? Yeah, the vertex is going to be on the x-axis. So there's only one spot where it crosses. Like that. So if we think about um, if we think about those graphs, we could do a pretty simple example. I bet you can all think of an example, maybe it's been a while since we've done graphing with these, that starts right at the vertex. What is an equation of a parabola that starts right at the at the origin. I mean. The vertex is at the origin. Yeah, just y equals x squared. Exactly. So let's see what happens when we plug that into the quadratic formula. Which is a little silly because we already know what's going to happen. But I just want to show you. So y equals x squared. 
What is my A in this equation? One. What is my B? Zero. And what is my C? Zero. Okay. So plugging this into the quadratic equation, we're going to have negative zero plus or minus the square root of zero squared minus four times one times zero, which is just zero, over two times one. So this is just zero plus or minus the square root of zero over two, which is just zero over two, which is just zero. And so we end up with one solution for this. And our solution is x equals zero. Of course, it's possible to have a graph that has one solution that's not zero, too. Okay, so let's look at some other examples of these. I don't think there was one on the homework last night, but. Oh, yeah, the second one, you're right. I forgot about that one. Did we do that in class? I can't remember. So, okay, let's look at that one. If you have b squared minus 4b plus 4 equals 0, uh, a is 1, b is negative 4, and c is positive 4. So what I would do, now that we know about this discriminant trick, is I would first figure out what is b squared minus 4ac? On well, this, it's going to be 16 minus 16. Because 4 times 1 times 4 is 16. And negative 4 squared is also 16. So 16 minus 16 is 0. I know right away then that I'm going to have one solution. And I've already done part of the quadratic formula. So now I can just plug into the part quadratic formula. In this case, it's going to be b equals, because our variable is b instead of x. And we're going to have 4. I already know it's going to be plus or minus 0, because I did that part, over 2. And so our answer is 4 over 2. Do you see how that works? Now, when this is really useful is if we get a negative value for our discriminant. Okay, so what if we had something like, like this? Um, let's say my instruction was find the zeros. Zeros? Does it have an E in it? I don't know. <laughs> well, we'll pretend it does. Y equals, and let's say I gave you something like x squared plus 2x um, plus 8. So what I tend to do with a problem like this is I first look and see, is there any easy way to factor that? If there's not, then I just immediately go to the quadratic form. Because <laughs> even if I don't see the easy way to factor it, the quadratic formula is not going to be that hard with an easily factorable quadratic anyway. So sometimes you can save yourself time by factoring. But I wouldn't spend too much time on it because the quadratic formula will always work. So I don't see an easy way to factor that. So I would immediately go to the quadratic formula. I know I'm looking for 0 equals uh, x squared plus 2x plus 8. But before I actually use the quadratic formula, I'm just going to find the discriminant. Okay, So I'm just going to find b squared, which is 4, minus 4 times 1 times 8. I'm going to immediately notice this number is going to be bigger than this number. I have 4 minus <coughs> 32. So I'm going to have like negative 28. And I'm going to stop. I don't have to do the rest of the quadratic formula to know that there are no solutions. Right? I don't have to.
to do the negative b part. I don't have to do the 2a part. As soon as I see that the discriminant is negative, I just say square root of a negative number is not going to be a real number. And so I have no solutions to this problem. And then you just stop right there. You will see problems on tests and placement tests and that sort of thing where they give you a quadratic, you know, y equals x squared plus 2x plus 1. And they say, find the discriminant of this quadratic. And that's all they ask you to do. Right? So you know, that just means b squared minus 4ac, that little thing that's underneath the square root. So in this quadratic, it would be, so if I just said find the discriminant, I would do 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1. In this case, it's 4 minus 4, which is 0. So my discriminant is 0. And then, sometimes you'll see a second instruction, something like, how many solutions does this quadratic have? And you don't actually have to find them to know that this will have one solution. to know. What's the easiest way to answer this question? Yeah, use the discriminant. So the first thing I have to do is make sure that it equals 0. So I'm going to have 8n squared plus 7n. Add 7 to both sides. And I get minus 8. Okay. Then I take my discriminant. What's the discriminant? B squared minus 4ac. So in this case, I have 7 squared, which is 49, minus, well, actually, let's look at this first. Minus a 4 times a positive number times a negative number. So it's actually going to be plus. And actually, if all I want to know is how many solutions there are, I'm done. There's no way a positive number plus something else is going to give me a negative number. Well, let's keep going just, just because. So I have here 4 times 8 times 8. So 64 times 4, which is, let's see, 60 plus 25, 256. Uh, which is, I don't know, what is that, 305? So this is a positive number. My discriminant is a positive number, so I know that I have two solutions. And that's a lot easier than actually plugging this stuff into the quadratic formula. Right? Trying to find the square root of 305, if there even is one. We avoid that whole kind of second step just by doing the discriminant. All right. That's enough.